As we discussed earlier in the year, cells function best when they're small, but they do grow. And then we, of course, always need more cells for both organismal growth and repair of tissues. So that's where the cell cycle comes into play. What we are looking at here is two different parts of the cell. Well, we're looking at this picture shows the entire cell cycle. Right, so here's our whole cell cycle, but we can divide the cell cycle into two major parts. Interphase, which consists of G1, S, and G2, and then cell division, which is mitosis and cytokinesis. G1, G for growth. So this is when the cell is growing, it's metabolically active, so it's going through all of its normal functions um, to sustain its life um, or the life of the organism. Cellular respiration, photosynthesis, and autotrophs. Um, transport, passive and active transport, enzymes are being produced, etc. The S phase of the cell cycle stands for synthesis. This is when DNA replication occurs. So during G1, all of the chromosomes are just single little chromosomes. And so we'd have a whole bunch of chromosomes in the cell at the beginning of the S phase. But when the DNA is replicated, it's copied. So you end up with two copies of every chromosome. So we still have four chromosomes in this case, but now four chromosomes, four chromosomes, now each chromosome is made up of two identical sister chromatids. So we've increased the amount of DNA, but have not changed the number of chromosomes. That is really important because later on in the cell cycle, when the cell divides, each new cell will have a copy of the DNA. We'll talk about DNA replication and how that occurs later on. Um, and then after the DNA is replicated, we go into the G2 phase, um, sometimes also known as growth two. So the cell grows a little bit more, and here it's really preparing for mitosis. So organelles and proteins are being synthesized, and it's ready to go. And then we go into cell division, which is what we're going to be spending most of this video looking at. But first, let's just talk a little bit more about what's going on during interphase. So interphase, remember, which is G1, S, and G2, right, is where cells spend most of their time. And during interphase, the nucleus is intact, so you can see the nuclear envelope right here, um, and the DNA is all unwound, so it's chromatin. So chromatin, which is when, the, what basically, like thread, right, all unspooled, it's not organized, but it's accessible. So this way, the DNA can make RNA, which will then be used to direct the synthesis of proteins, something we will talk about in our next unit. Um, and in addition to the DNA um, being chromatin, so it just looks, makes this dark blob kind of, um, we also can see the nucleolus inside of the cell. So as the cell grows during G1 and then replicates its DNA during S phase and then continues to grow and prepare during, for mitosis during G2, this is what it would look like. So with a microscope, you would not be able to see what's actually going on inside the cell on a cellular level. But once we get into mitosis, we can actually see the movement of the chromosomes. The beginning of mitosis is marked by prophase. During prophase, that chromatin, the DNA, it was all unwound, starts to condense. What it does is it winds around, wraps around these proteins called histones, which helps to organize the DNA. And it makes it so you can actually start to see chromosomes. So over here in this picture showing early prophase, you can start to see the chromosomes forming. And here in late prophase, you can see clear, more clearly the chromosomes. Other things that occur um, is that the nucleolus breaks down, disappears. The nuclear envelope starts to break down as well. And then the centrioles, which we can see centrioles here and here, which are cell structures involved in division, start to move to opposite ends of the cell. And the spindle apparatus, which we can see right here, okay, these spindles, nice protein fibers, um, help to pull the, um, or kind of push, I guess, the centrioles away from one another, and those spindles are going to connect to the chromosomes to move them around. 
Metaphase is when the chromosomes line up in the middle of the cell. So yay for the letter M for metaphase, middle. Um, they line up along the metaphase plate. It's kind of like the equator. It's an imaginary line. It doesn't really exist in the cell, but it's the halfway point, as we can see right here, between the two centrioles. And in this image over here, we can see all of the chromosomes lined up in the middle. You can see the centrioles at each end, and then these lines are the spindle fibers. And what the spindle fibers are doing is they connect to the chromosomes at what's called the, centri uh, the kinetochore. We'll write that one down. It's a word that I don't expect you would ever see on MCAS, but you might see it at some point. The kinetochore, which is a region on each um, chromatid of the chromosome where the spindle fibers can connect. After metaphase, the so once they're all lined up in the middle and they're all organized, now the spindle fibers are going to start to shorten. Right? So spindle fibers start to contract, moving away from the middle of the cell, pulling the two chromatids away from each other. So the sister chromatids, which were identical, contain the exact same DNA, um, were attached by the centromere. They're located kind of roughly in the middle of the chromosome, although it depends on the type. And as those move away, as they break away, they now become each their own chromosome. So once the identical sister chromatids are no longer attached, they are their own chromosome. So we have chromosomes moving in opposite directions, being pulled apart and away. In a phase. And we can see that happening here. So there are spindles that are lengthening the cell. Then there are so some spindles, these right here, which we can see in the middle of the cell, that are actually getting longer. And then these spindles are getting shorter. The final stage of mitosis is telophase, and telophase oftentimes takes place at the same time as cytokinesis. So let's look first at what's happening during telophase. So telophase, being described right here, it's pretty much the opposite of prophase. The chromosomes, the spindles pull the chromosomes all the way to the opposite end of the pole near the centrioles. The nuclear membrane, a new nuclear membrane, forms around each set of chromosomes. The chromosomes unwind to form chromatin, okay, so that nice accessible DNA, and the nucleolus will reappear, and there'll be a nucleolus in each one. So we'll have two nucleoli and two nuclei. That marks the end of mitosis. So mitosis is the division of the nucleus. Okay? Cytokinesis is the division of the cytoplasm. We can add that in here, division of cytoplasm. And that occurs differently in plant and animal cells. This is showing animal cells. So what happens is there's a ring, a protein ring. It's made of myosin and actin, not something you need to, need to know, but a protein ring that constricts, okay? It pinches in the membrane, forms what's called a cleavage furrow, and you can see that happening here. So in this image of a cell down here, we can see telophase is being completed, so you can still see chromosomes are visible. It's not an interphase yet. We don't quite have a nucleolus visible in this cell. And you can also see where the membrane, the cell membrane, is being pinched in. So eventually these two cells whoop, would separate and go in different directions. And then we'd have two identical cells. As I just mentioned, cytokinesis is different in animal and plant cells. So here on the left, this is cytokinesis. This is being viewed from the outside now, external, so you cannot see the chromosomes, but this is cytokinesis occurring in a sea urchin. Um, so you can see that cleavage furrow where that protein ring is constricting and getting smaller and smaller to pinch off these two cells, or in, pinch that one cell into two cells. Over here, we have a plant cell going through cytokinesis, and plant cells, as you remember, have a cell wall. So because we cannot just pinch off the cell, the cell wall is too rigid for that, what happens is we get the formation of a cell plate. So the cell plate that's forming right here is basically the creation of a new wall. So imagine you had a big room and you wanted to split it into two rooms. How would you do that? You'd build a wall in the middle, and that's what's happening here. So we have, we have the two nuclei that have formed, and then we have the new cell wall forming.